Playing video games with you all over on the gaming channel the other day, I was reminded of this graph, which as you can see, I completely understood. And that, the energy that it, I don't get it, Chad. Thanks, Arya. You're welcome. Look, I only got so confused because I was trying to explain to all of you at home in real time what has been called the most important graph in physics. This one line has literally changed the world, and today we're gonna fully understand it. You split it. Oh my God. Uh, for real this time, probably. Now entering the facility. Almost 120 years ago now, back in 1905, genius and mustache enthusiast Albert Einstein discovered one of the most mind-bending things in fundamental physics. He explained via his most famous equation that if you were to take a nucleus of an atom and weigh it, and then take all the pieces of that nucleus and weigh them separately, the two masses would not be the same. There would be a so-called mass defect. But how could this be? If mass can neither be created nor destroyed, how could some mass be missing? Maybe it just disappeared, like your chance to be a Mythbuster. Uh, yeah, I, I guess something like that could have, could have happened. Thanks, Arya. You're welcome. The nuclear binding energy of an atom is how much energy it would take to overcome the strong nuclear force and force apart its protons and neutrons all the way out to infinity. Because each atom on the periodic table has a different number of these particles, or nucleons, their nuclear binding energy varies atom to atom. Now, if there is energy bound up in the continuation of a nucleus, it follows that there is also energy released during the formation of a nucleus, and that energy has to come from somewhere. And that somewhere is mass. What E equals mc squared really represents is the amazing fact that energy and mass are equivalent. They are one and the same. The mass defect between protons and neutrons in a helium nucleus, for example, is literally mass becoming energy. Nuclear binding energy is a bit like this rubber band. Right now, it is stable, like a stable atomic nucleus. And you know that it takes some energy to separate the atoms and molecules in the rubber band, like it takes some energy to separate the nucleons in a nucleus. And in the formation of a nucleus, energy has to be released. Now, this isn't quite a perfect analogy. This rubber band in our example would be actually heavier when it's stretched, but you don't need a perfect analogy. There are actual examples of this. If you have a sufficiently advanced weighing machine, hot water is heavier than cold water. And if you have a molecule that's very energy laden like TNT, it's actually heavier before you explode it than afterwards if you went around and picked up all the pieces of the explosion. Just like you had to pick up the pieces of your life after Because Science? Yes, Arya. It's exactly like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Gamers, I'm award-winning science educator and avid endorsement, Kyle Hill. You know, when you run a business with a lot of Kevins like me, you're signing up for a lot of stuff online. Yes, I would love to sign them all up for underwater basket weaving classes, but I don't want another website to have my real email and phone number. It's already in too many places. That's why I use today's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a premium virtual private network service that encrypts all of your information sent between devices and the internet. You can use Surfshark to bypass censorship, mask your IP address, or change your device's virtual location. And with Surfshark's alternate ID feature, you can even generate new phone numbers and email addresses at will, so you don't have to give your information to websites you don't trust, spammers looking to put you on another mailing list, or that guy with the sunglasses in his avatar who is definitely going to digitally stalk you. If you want a more secure surfing experience like me, go to the link down in the description and then use the offer code KYLE for four extra months free. There's a free 30-day money-back guarantee and you get an unlimited number of devices for your account. <laughs> no scammers, you're never gonna get my real email. Cause it's embarrassing, cause I came up with it when I was uh, 14. So shark, try it. Mathematically speaking, 
If you take the mass defect and you throw it into E equals mc squared, you get the nuclear binding energy of that atom. If you then divide the binding energy by the number of nucleons that atom has, and then graph that against the number of nucleons for every atom in the periodic table, you get possibly one of the most important graphs ever uh, graphed. This is the curve of binding energy graph. It plots the average binding energy per nucleon against the number of nucleons in an atom. You can think of the binding energy as a stand-in for stability. This average stability increases the more nucleons you have until you've journeyed from hydrogen all the way to nickel and iron. Then, stability decreases as you get closer to uranium and the heavier elements. Might seem weird, but it makes sense if you think about what's really going on inside the atom. Yes, there is still the strong nuclear force, but it only acts across very small distances. And so as you cram more and more nucleons into an atom, repulsive electrical forces between charged particles like protons start to dominate, which makes the atom less stable. Finally, we get to the true importance of this graph. Because there are differences along this line in nuclear stability, there are two areas where two atoms can come together to be a more stable atom, and one atom can split apart to become two more stable atoms and release energy in each case. These two areas denote the energetically advantageous processes of nuclear fusion and fission, respectively. Now, if you're looking at all of this and you're still confused, don't worry. He was too. Thanks, Arya. You're welcome. I think humans tend to view larger numbers as maybe less stable, not more stable. You want like a stable thing to be closer to like a zero value, right? Well, let's try to do that and flip everything upside down. I don't know about you, but having the more stable atoms be closer to the bottom of the graph just makes more sense to me. The energies are still the same here, but having atoms in fusion or fission moving towards a valley of stability and giving off energy as they do so feels more comprehensible. It's just one of those ways our minds are evolved to work. It's just a quirk of human psychology, kind of like how it's a quirk where if given a choice between assigning Kiki and or Boba to these shapes, most humans will assign the shape on the left, Kiki, and the one on the right, Boba. I can't explain it. it just, it's just a Kiki. That's just a Kiki. And that's a Boba. This one graph proves, theoretically, that if we could figure out how to do it practically, we could harness tremendous amounts of energy via the mass defect and E equals mc squared when we smashed atoms together and split them apart. And so when we figured out how to do this, nuclear fission immediately and irrevocably upended all of global politics in the form of nuclear weapons, which also gave us a self-imposed existential threat, the first one in our history. Nuclear fission also produced nuclear power, which could rid the world of fossil fuels if everyone wasn't so afraid of it. Nuclear fusion isn't here yet, but it still promises free, unlimited energy. All of this from this line. Maybe you will make more sense upside down too. No, no, wait, Ari, I'm not gonna do so good upside down. <laughs> oh, thanks, Ari. You're welcome. Hey, while I'm down here, uh, and because my old body can't get up, hey, quick aside, do you know why stars die? It's because as they try to fuse heavier and heavier elements together in their cores from hydrogen all the way up to iron, when they get to iron, it's no longer energetically favorable to fuse stuff together. And so there's no thermal pressure from that process of fusion pushing out against the tremendous gravity that keeps them basically perfectly spherical. And then that gravity collapses them and then the stars die. You know, kind of like the collapse of my... Huh, I thought for sure Arya was gonna say something right there. I guess I'll, uh, I guess I'll just be here. It would take another 40 years after Einstein and his discovery of the mass defect for some of the smartest men alive to truly unlock nuclear fission. Nuclear fusion, on the other hand, still isn't here. Seems like it's always 10 years out. Why? We have the graph. It's simple, right? Well, 
What this graph does not say is just how difficult it is to recreate the conditions under which nuclear fission and fusion are actually energetically favorable. We're talking about temperatures and pressures here with more zeros than a Last of Us 2 Reddit thread. You know who you are with your bad takes, dum-dums. For giving us everything from insights into the lives of stars to, most consequentially, and unfortunately, nuclear weapons, it's arguable that this single graph has affected human life more than any other. And now, you fully understand it. You're welcome. Hasta la próxima vez. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, if you want to be able to touch my hair someday, probably not. If you want to join our private Discord, private live streams, all of that, that's patreon.com slash Kyle Hill. Get in, get nerdy. And if you support us just enough over on Patreon, you get your name in every single video here on Aria. Don't worry, she doesn't mind. There's so many of you. How am I gonna pay? Kyle, you're stalling. No, I'm not. I'm not stalling for time for all of the Patreons. The Patre so if you really actually wanna see me be confused for 45 minutes plus about this graph, go ahead and check out the game stream where I do so. I, I can't wrap my head around it. And I do think it is because of this communication issue, having things flipped upside down that aren't conceptually how I view energy and the release of energy in, in large and small numbers. There's other examples of this across science communication. I think of one uh, where doctors have asked people to evaluate uh, pluses and minuses of getting a vaccine, of, of false positives, of getting mammograms early or not. And when you frame it in a different way from more human angles, it makes a lot more sense. So communication matters. Thanks for watching.